Uh, good morning. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the statistical tools that uh, we, we will be using for to analyze our uh, research. So last time we discussed, in the previous videos, we discussed about the independent t-test and then the non-parametric equivalent, the Mann-Whitney test. This morning we're going to discuss the dependent t-test, the framework, the hypothesis, the statement of the problem for the dependent t-test and then the equivalent non-parametric test of the Wilcoxon match pair, the, the Wilcoxon match uh, pair test. So let's continue, let's start. So in this study here, let's assume that your study is about you want to compare the satisfaction level of product A and product B. Okay, so from this conceptual framework, so this is, these are products, the type of products, so product A and product B, and then we want to compare the, the satisfaction level, their satisfaction level. So the question is, how are we going to decide if it is, if it is independent or the paired t-test? Take note here, this portion here, how many dependent variables do we have in our study? Dependent variable is only one because there is only one satisfaction level and it is in continuous form. And then how many independent variables do we have? Independent variables, there is only one independent variable, which is the type of products here. And then, uh, what type of variable, our independent variable? It is a categorical variable. We have the product A and product B. This is a categorical variable. And if categorical, how many categories do we have? In this case, we have two. We only have two. We have the product A and the product B. So that is why we will proceed in, in, the, in this uh, this flow. So the question here is, if categorical same, if categorical same or different participants. So last time we have we have different participants. Now we, we will go here on the same participants. How are we going to know if different or the same participants? The difference here is when you when you uh, create you created your uh, date your survey questionnaire. If if you're going to ask a respondent, a single respondent, and you will ask him or her to answer the satisfaction level for both product A and product B, hence we have uh, the same participants. Last time, in our conceptual framework last time, the male and female, if a single respondent can only uh, represent for example, if he is a male, so he can only represent the male. He cannot he cannot represent the female. So he cannot do he cannot be the same participants. In this case, you can your the respondents can answer the satisfaction level for product A and product B. That is why when in in our data in the data gather that we have here, so this is the satisfaction level for product A. And this is the satisfaction level for product B. Uh, product A1, product A2, product A3 are, are the items that you want to test for that particular product. For example, the, the first item here is you probably have the taste, the color, the presentation, so on and so forth. And then later on, we're going to, to get the average, to get the, the mean satisfaction of the product, product A total satisfaction here. Okay? Later on, we'll do that. So, but before that, we're going to analyze first our conceptual framework. That's our framework here. So if we're going to take a look at the statistical uh, framework that we have, so if this is the same, so if it will follow, if it will meet the assumption for parametric test, we're going to use the dependent t test. If not, we're going to do the Wilcoxon pair test. Okay, so the statement of the problem here is, uh, what is the satisfaction level for uh, products A and B? So first is we have to establish the mean. What is the mean of our product A and what is the mean satisfaction level for product B? Then after we, we got our the mean, the mean values here, there, we can now question, is there a significant difference in their satisfaction level? Are our clients, our customers satisfied, are, are more satisfied in product A or in product B, so on and so forth? And our hypothesis here is there is no significant difference in the satisfaction level, satisfaction level of products A and B. Okay. So before we can decide if we're going to use the paired t-test or dependent t-test or the Wilcoxon test, we're going to have to test first it's the assumption for normality and homogeneity or variances. No, only the 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 normality of our data. 
However, here, take note that according to the book of Andy Fields in the Discovering Statistics using SPSS, he said that in testing the assumption for normality for the paired t-test, uh, we have to get the difference of the response first and the difference between uh, the, two, the two values, that is the value that we're going to to analyze for the normality testing, okay? So, let's try. So, in this case, this is now the, the item A, item B, so it equals the average, the average of this portion here, and then we, also, we will also get the average of the product B here, okay? So, and then highlight all of that, ignore error, and then drug so these are now the satisfaction level so these are now the satisfaction level of of both product A and product B so we have to copy that one to the SPSS and then paste it here and then we go to the variable view this one is our product A and this portion here is our product B Okay, both variables are scale. Okay, and then if we go back, we go back, this product A and product B. According to the book of Andy Fields, he stated that we have to get the difference first and the difference, the, 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 the value, that variable we're going to test for the normality of our data. Okay, so what, how are we going to do it? So you go to transform, compute, and then let's call the new variable difference. And then the product A minus product B, as simple as that. And then just press OK. So it will create a new variable here, the difference. And the difference. And then we're going to, to analyze descriptive and then same with the previous process, explore. And then the difference, let's analyze these descriptives. And then let's analyze the, the normality. Okay. the normality of the, the data so, okay so so the most important thing here is the test of of normality here test of normality uh, what is our guidelines again so our guideline is for normality testing if the significant value is greater than 0.05 we can say that the data does not significantly differ from normal distribution. If the value is less than 0 0.05, then the data significantly differ from normal distribution and not normal. So let's take a look at our results here. So the result shows that the SIG value for the difference is 0 0.82. So this is greater than 0 0.05. Hence, we are going to assume that our data follows normal distribution. So, so let's go back to the Word file. Very important to edit the Word file in every step. So the satisfaction levels for so the satisfaction level for uh, products A and B met the assumption of normality. We can also state that one in, in the in this in this form and then we have to d it's the degrees of freedom here the degrees of freedom is 385 385 and then we will write the value of the statistic 0 0.43 and then the p is greater than 0 0.05 okay meet the data assumption we can delete this portion here. Okay, so the satisfaction level per, for the difference. Okay, the, the difference, we can write the difference here of satisfaction level for products A and B met the assumption of normality. So we're good with that. So if the assumption is good, so yes. So we will proceed to the dependent t-test. So we're going to use dependent t-test since our data uh, meet the assumption of normality. So 
since there's some satisfaction level, so since satisfaction level, the difference of satisfaction level for level for products A and B met the assumption for parametric test hence the researcher use dependent t-test okay so we're going to use the dependent t-test so the, this assumption here this portion here is our justification why we use the dependent t-test okay so the results so in this case if you're going to use the dependent t-test you will only uh, fill up this form here, the results for the parametric test. And if not, we are going to use the, the portion here. If you are going to do the, the Wilcoxon. However, we will just do in this video, we are going to do first the dependent t-test. So how are we going to do the dependent t-test? Very simple. You go back to the SPSS. And then, you go to analyze, compare means, and then the paired t-test, sample t-test. And then you drag the product A here. Then you product B here. Yeah, and then let's check for the options. 95%. And then just press OK. Okay, if we're going to press OK here, so this is the result. This is the result of the paired t-test. And then this is the mean. So from this table here, we can say that the mean for product A is 5.46. And for product B is 5.56. And then let's take a look at the significance value here. So we said significant value. Okay, so let's try to paste the results to the word in, the, in our word file. Okay, so we have to copy this one. Copy or if right click, copy special, make sure that the image file here is checked. Okay, copy and then you go back to the word, word file. Okay, you, you can change the space it here and then you click that one and then image. Okay, and then this one is the it's the mean satisfaction level, the 5.46 and the and the 5.56. And then for the dependent t test, in this case this is dependent t test. Okay, we have to copy this one, and then we paste it here. And then, let's paste it as a picture, and then minimize. Okay, so that is our, that is our data. So, how are we going to analyze now? So, the mean <coughs> satisfaction level for product A is 5.46. The mean satisfaction level for product B is 5.56. So, the question here is, since there is a difference here, a slight difference, so the level of satisfaction for product A is slightly higher than product B. Uh, the product B is slightly higher than product A. But the question is, is there a significant difference? So, in order to answer that question, we are going to, to look at this table here. So, the product A and product B. The important part here is the SIG value. The SIG value is 3 point, uh, point 0.383. So, using the guidelines that we had in the previous video, this is for t-tests. Okay, so since the value is greater than, if the value is greater than, so that means that the mean significantly differ, does not significantly differ from each other. If the value is less than 0 0.05, then the mean or median significantly differs from each other. Since the value of the same value here is 0.383, which is greater than 0 0.05, greater than, so the mean does not significantly differ from each other. 
It's not significantly different from each other. So if the mean does not significantly differ from each other, we cannot compute the effect size here. That's it. The difference does not significantly differ from each other. We have to delete that one. And then we, we have now to, to make our, our conclusion. So on average, the satisfaction level of product A So let's go back to our conclusion. So on average, the satisfaction level of product B, this is the mean, 5.57, is greater than our product A. This is the mean. This answers the statement of the problem number one. What is the satisfaction level for, for both products A and B? So the satisfaction level are this one. And then product B is slightly higher. It's greater than, or greater than product A. 5.46 and this is the error so the, the difference was not statistically significant so this is the t the t for the statistic and then the 384 here is the value here the degrees of freedom and then this one is for the t the t value and then p is greater than 0 0.05 in the next video we're going to look at an example where our data does not follow a normal distribution. Okay? Thank you.